We're here to solve this Tapa puzzle by Grant Fikes. It's a variation that has an even number of shaded cells in each row and column. And the theme is avoid the edge. You can see all the clues here are in the interior of the grid, two cells away from a border. We've got some easy clues like the central eight. And we also have a case where around this pattern one, 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 which has two options, the cell that the option that would shade this cell, but put unshaded around it would isolate the top of cell immediately, and so this has to be the one that uses diagonal cells, the 2-2 two, two right next to it. It's going to quickly fill in as a result. Um, around this 5 clue, there are three options uh, left that can take the two cells to the left, the two to the right, or just one more in, but the top cell above the 5 clue can't be reached anymore. We can mark a few edges in, not that this is very helpful, but sometimes when people are first getting started with top edge, seeing where you can't cross over a boundary will start to show you isolated bits of the grid. The one thing these edges will quickly give you, I think, is the fact that over here around this five, we've got a lot of cells we can't fill in. Actually, we can't complete two by two uh, sets around some of these spaces that we've already shaded cells in. So this wrap around this five clue is immediate and uh, marked in like so. Cells like this can't ever be reached. These two cells have to get out, so they have to take the space to stay connected. And I think that's a good start to the puzzle. And now we'll come back to some of the connectivity steps and hopefully transition from that into the even rows and columns constraint. So one thing I see in this pattern in the top is that uh, there are really two options. There's a space where um, the cells come off to the right and will sort of isolate the upper left part of the grid so that we'll have to come down this edge. And separately, you could have the cells on top come to the left, and then they also come down uh, this edge of the grid. And so between those options, you should see that the connectivity requires coming down this side, because if you came up through the space, you can't get further out. So this group on the left has to come down. And because of all these marked borders, this will have to keep coming down to this ninth row uh, one error that I actually made in my first solve of this puzzle was immediately grabbing this cell. You'll see that I also could take this cell, but I do have to come down and extend along this edge. So for connectivity, this is a forced part of the solution. And having marked some of these connection steps in, we can now come back to other parts of the grid where we have really just one row or option left for things. Uh, this fourth row, we've got seven cells shaded with one cell to go. That's got to be shaded for the even row constraint. This row just beneath it has four cells shaded with one left to go. That has to be left unshaded to keep the even row constraint working. The row just beneath it now for connectivity has to have these marked in. I'll actually mark all the clues off so it's just easier to see uh, these pattern cells and see that there are six here and we'll have to take uh, some more for this to work out. So I think one of the things I'm going to do at this stage is start to consider where we'll have uh, pairs of cells that always work together. And maybe I'll start around this five clue there. We talked about having three options for how it would shade the ones that have two coming up. And I pretty quickly see that there's this option that has two cells coming in and the cell being marked off. This is not valid. So the only options for this five are an option that takes these two cells or these two cells. And I'll use different colors, but recognize that both in blue are shaded or both in red are shaded, but not uh, collectively blue and red being shaded. And I can then come back and look at the row counts and see that in this third row, I've got one shaded cell, one more shaded cell, either blue or red. And this last one will be unshaded. That gives two in the row. And here I have one, two, three, four, one more shaded and a sixth to make that uh, an even space. And this kind of thinking will also help in the columns. For instance, this seventh column has five shaded. It gets to five or seven based on if the blue is shaded, but this remaining one will be uh, a sixth or an eighth to get an even number. In this column, we've got three shaded. We've got to take one more. And so there, those are some of the ways to paint in the grid to help here. Um, there are also now scenarios where I've got two cells left over and I may be able to say they're both shaded or both unshaded, but they work together. And I think one of the first places I'm going to work off this is right here. And these two cells, I have two shaded in this row. And um, I have an option where the remaining cell around this one, one clue will be also shaded in the space. And so if it is shaded, the cell up top is shaded. 
Notice that what that will do is mean both of these cells are unused. I have one, two, three, four, five uh, in this space, and so that would also force shading here. And so um, with the option that takes the twos coming around the top, for sure I shade this one, one. Uh, with the option that doesn't take the twos around the top, I've got to be in orange. And if I'm in orange, I'm not using this cell, I'm not using either of these cells. So there's a little bit of that parity matching that I think you can count. Um, that doesn't seem to be the key break into the puzzle, but I'm just trying to get some feel of the constraints around the grid. And I think this is a place where in this puzzle you get either a, a, a quick uh, happenstance find of the right solution or, or you're trying to like eliminate one cell at a time, which gets very slow progress. Notice that for sure I've got one cell in yellow um, in this column, another cell in yellow in this column. That's what's going to fulfill the 1-1 one, one clue. And so I'm actually pretty interested about counting the total number of, of uh, cells that are shaded in these three columns, two, three, and four. And notice that we had started the grid with an option where we could shade these in brown for connectivity. So let's think about what happens if brown is being shaded in. We now have, uh, for instance, in these columns, remembering yellow is a forced shading. What we, the only cells we don't really know about are white, and there's either zero or one in total in the whites. Right now in brown, we've got one, two, three, four, five, and so we would need to get one more here. Um, in this column, we've got one, two, that looks perfect. In this column, we have one, two, three, four, five, and we need to get one more shaded in. And so there's a challenge with parity, which is if the browns are shaded in the top, we need to put in actually four shaded cells below, the two in yellow and two more in brown, and you can't put these cells around this one clue. So one thing that means is brown is not uh, a valid way to shade and keep connected at the top. So let's just take this out, and in particular this cell is out, and so we know that light pink is true. So this is what we mentioned was going to happen as a result of that being the case. And get to this situation in the grid. We've got one, two, three, four shaded in the space, so this is not shaded, this is not reachable, and this is. So we're going to have this as the point, and now I think we want to, um, this cell we don't actually know anything about, that was a, uh, while I was sketching things in, so care, be careful when you do this so you don't sort of track a bad result. So now we have two options again, which are this cell being used or this cell not being used, and uh, recognize that if we have these two in, we have the same count issue of one, two, three, four, five, and needing another here, so there is a space where if this top cell is shaded, we're going to get um, a space down and require using this cell. And so let's see in the space where um, things are not shaded, if we have a similar constraint we can work through. If this top one is not shaded, then uh, the thing to note, and this is kind of a two color sort of option, for sure blue or red are shaded. And if blue is shaded, the cell comes in. And if blue is shaded, it then means one of these two is shaded and not this cell. And so if red is shaded or one of these in blue is shaded in all scenarios, the, the, the bottom of the ones in yellow weren't possible to get an even count here. This is, again, a pretty tricky deduction, but it's where you're going to have to add two into the column to get more into it because yellow is already there. Adding two into the column is causing issues. And so we're going to have a case where this for sure is shaded. That completes this row. Uh, we've got three here with one more. That must be shaded to get to even. We've got two in the space, so we've got to mark this as off. We're going to have now one cell here that gets shaded in. So that's one, two, three more, one more to get that space shaded. And now we're going to get to this sticking point where I think we still have a fair number of options in the grid. But one thing I see is I've got these two cells that will both look the same and these two cells that will both look the same. And that's because right now in their column, I've got six shaded and either two in red or zero in red, so still an even number. And so both in purple are true and potentially both in orange are true. And a thing to note is that because we already have two cells shaded near these, both pink and, sorry, both purple and orange can't collectively be true. And that uh, now is going to finally tell us how we think around this clue. If, if red were on, um, sorry, if red were off, uh, you would shade both of these in, which forces both of these to be shaded, and that causes an issue. So it's not the case that red is off. It's the case that blue is off. And marking that end, these in red are shaded. 
this for connectivity is shaded, so this is not, again, then orange is not, purple is shaded. So we get this start. Um, we've got seven in this bottommost row, which puts in the eighth, which says blue is not true. So around the grid, blue is not true. Get this last cell and one more in red, and we finish this challenging puzzle. There may have been some other bookkeeping to do around the grid, but it did seem this had a lot of focus and its sticking points around seeing parity in a row or in a column, sets of cells that have to collect together. I very much saw that the count in rows two, or sorry, columns two through four were very constrained, particularly around these low digit clues at the bottom, which were all that were remaining to fill. So a pretty challenging end to an interesting puzzle from Grant Fikes. Hope you learned a little bit about solving this and some tips and tricks for top of notation as well. We'll see you again soon.